I'm Hannah Cohoon, and in this video, I present a case study from some recent field work that I conducted under the mentorship of James Howison. This video discusses grounded theory methods, focusing on an often mystified aspect of the methodology, theoretical sampling. We share our experience with theoretical sampling, drawing attention to how useful it can be for overcoming challenges during data collection. And we provide some recommendations for how you can practice theoretical sampling yourself. Through a grounded theory approach, researchers produce an explanation of some phenomenon. But publications rarely describe in detail how that explanation, or theory, is created. Results and discussion sections might be rich with detail and analysis, but grounded theory methods are often described only briefly. For newcomers to HCI, or grounded theory, this often makes learning difficult and glossing over methodology runs counter to the growing demand for transparency in science. Our case of grounded theory methods and theoretical sampling comes from my dissertation work. To better understand how a platform for open science, OSF, is built and used, in this study I collected several forms of qualitative data and used a grounded theory approach to analyze it. OSF allows researchers to openly share their work through OSF projects. Projects can contain data sets, papers, study materials, whatever the researcher wants. The platform is also useful for registering research, an open science practice that involves disclosing methods and hypotheses often in advance of data collection. I conducted a grounded theory study of this digital field site, OSF, its users, its developers, and its non-users, too. Grounded theory analysis involves iteratively collecting and analyzing data to produce a theory that explains the observed phenomenon. This theory can then be generalized to other contexts. The iterative processes involved in grounded theory are referred to as constant comparison and theoretical sampling. And together, these processes are an abductive approach that produces a theory that's integrated, consistent, plausible, close to the data. Rather than deduced through hypothesis testing, the theory is grounded in the data and internally validated. This work can be informed by sensitizing concepts that provide initial but tentative ideas for analysis. Sensitizing concepts for the study of OSF were derived through literature review. For instance, we were sensitized to possible conflicts between the values of OSF developers and researchers meant to use OSF. We were also sensitized to routines as a useful source of insight about actors' primary challenges and concerns. There was no formal hypothesis, but the data collection strategy was designed to detect differences in values and routine practices. I sought to create a theoretical sample that could do this. So interviews over Zoom addressed scholarly values. Observation was planned to capture OSF developers' routine behavior. And I planned to gather users' data from OSF logs as evidence of their routines as well. Constant comparison and theoretical sampling prompted adjustments to this data collection strategy along the way. Constant comparison is the fundamental process of grounded theory analysis. And it means that the researchers continuously making comparisons between data points so that they can find patterns. Comparison might be made in written memos or by coding data and comparing examples. Data might be recoded later, and old codes might get combined, like here in Atlas TI. Codes get tested and made more consistent through additional constant comparison. In the study of OSF, constant comparison also showed things like where recruitment efforts needed to be concentrated. For example, by comparing coded data about registration, it was clear that I needed more data from users who had registered a study on OSF. There is plenty of data about OSF developers and their understanding of registration, but little in-depth detail on users' experiences. I saw this through comparison, but following through on that insight and adapting recruitment to capture more about users is an example of theoretical sampling. 
theoretical sampling is when the researcher collects new data because of insights from old data. As new data are collected, they may prompt researchers to pursue new directions or dig deeper into ongoing lines of analysis. In the example I just gave, I was prompted to dig deeper into the practice of registration. Theoretical sampling should be conducted with respect to the study's goals. Fathers of the grounded theory method, Glazer and Strauss, say that the basic questions in theoretical sampling are where do we turn to next in data collection, and for what theoretical purpose? Researchers shouldn't wander towards available data. They should seek out data that informs their research questions and emergent findings. Theoretical sampling helped address a major challenge during the study of OSF. The original plan to collect users' OSF logs proved troublesome. The logs were ones like those shown here. There are the actions, like uploading files, that OSF users had taken to build their projects. The data was meant to triangulate findings from interviews and observation and provide evidence of routines. But I failed multiple times over many weeks to gather activity logs through the OSF API and web scraping tools. So we decided a new theoretical sample was needed. But where should we turn to next and for what theoretical purpose? Rather than just collect any data, I needed to collect a theoretical sample that would best inform my ongoing analysis. So when faced with the challenge of finding a new data source fairly late in my study, we identified one that would bring greater depth to themes that I'd already recognized as important in my data. This would help clarify my emerging grounded theory. We also reasoned that it was still key to collect behavioral data on users' routines. This connected with the sensitizing concepts that had inspired the study, and this additional form of data allowed for triangulation. I opted to create a theoretical sample to meet these needs by doing what I called project mapping. And this involved using Miro to visualize the organizational hierarchy and contents of OSF projects. When compared with my interview and observation data, these project maps, like the one I'm building here, were further evidence of established findings. I saw that some users considered their research to be registered when they uploaded files that explained their study methods. But OSF developers considered registration to be a native feature of the platform that involved creating an archived version of the user's project. These findings were evident in my interviews, but project maps showed the extent of users' confusion. Some users leveraged the native feature, some users uploaded files, and some did both within the same project. The insight about conflicting forms of registration resonated with the sensitizing concepts established through my literature review, but it wasn't anticipated or hypothesized. Instead, it was cultivated through a series of decisions about what data to collect or which theoretical samples to construct. When constructing a theoretical sample yourself, we suggest answering a few questions to help guide and document your decision making. First, why are these data the right ones for the study? Second, how will these data speak to research questions, sensitizing concepts, or emergent findings? Which findings prompted changes in recruitment strategies? What aspects of recruitment does theoretical sampling influence? What ways does it impact research materials like interview protocols or collected traces? Journal articles might not have room for your answers to these questions, but they're excellent memo topics. And you can commit in advance of data collection to answering these questions. Qualitative research might not be traditionally thought of as compatible with open science practices like registration, but by committing in advance to answer questions like these, you can promise post hoc transparency and make yourself accountable to critically engaging with your data. And that's the real goal of grounded theory methods. We hope you have a better feel for what theoretical sampling looks like in action and how you can implement it in your own work. Thank you very much.